Okay, everybody, only one more section to go, and this is for our applications. Now, I saved this for last, but I'm guessing that most of you know a lot of the key application information. Uh, things like copy, paste, bold, undo, redo, that kind of stuff. Let me clean up my desktop here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a copy of Word. So we'll just type in Word, pop this up. And I'm going to create a new blank document. We'll just use a, a blank document. There's kind of a cool feature that a lot of people don't know you can do. And we use it a lot when we're training in that I want to show you a document with a bunch of text in it, but I don't want to have to write a bunch of text, and I don't want to show you my documents I'm currently working on. Some of them are business related. Um, so one of the things you can do is you can actually create bogus test text for you to play around with. And it's very simple. Watch what I'm typing here. I'm going to type equals lorem, L-O, oops, if I could only type, L-O-R-E-M, and then I'm going to open a parentheses, and I'm going to put two sets of numbers, in this case, four and six. Okay? And I'll close the parentheses. What I'm doing is I'm giving Word a command, and the reason it's called lorem is when you ask any of the Office applications to make bogus information, they always use this fake Latin or pseudo-Latin thing. It says lorem ipsum blah, 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 blah. So they actually created a command that says equals lorem, and the first thing you're going to do is tell it how many paragraphs you want, and the second number tells you how many sentences within that paragraph. Remember, it's just gibberish, but when I hit enter, you'll see it just gave me four paragraphs, and each of the paragraphs have six uh, lines or six sentences inside of it. So it's just kind of a cool way to fill up your, your page so that I can show you uh, some quick features that we have inside of our applications that we can use to do some great keyboard shortcuts. Now, before I do that, do you remember from an earlier episode, what was the one key I could hold down that'll show me all the other keyboard shortcuts inside my applications? If you said the Alt key, you are correct. When I hold down Alt, up pops all these shortcut keys, whether it's Excel or PowerPoint or Outlook or anything else. That's the fastest and easiest way. And again, you click it and they're up. And if I click it again, they go away if you don't need them. So uh, remember that that's there. Now that we got these apps up, let's talk about some real simple ones. You probably know a lot of these. If I want to copy all of the text on the page, no matter how many pages long, it could be 100 pages long, Control A selects all selects everything on the document. And this, by the way, works in Excel and PowerPoint and all the others too, Outlook. So Control A will select all the text. So if I wanted to now copy or cut or paste, you all probably know Control C is to copy. And then I'll just jump down to the end here and I'll use Control V to paste. And I just pasted that entire section from what to the other. This is different than if I cut. So I'm going to do Control A to select everything, and now if I cut, I'm using Control X. It uses the X icon because it's looking like a pair of scissors, right? And now it's cut it completely out, and when I paste it, it pastes it back in. So one makes a duplicate, one removes it and puts it in a new location and pastes it back in, right? Um, so that's probably very familiar with you. Cut, copy, and paste are very typical things you learn. You also know Control Z. Everyone should have that as their best friend. That's when you make a mistake. You can go backwards. And notice I'm, I continue to move backwards by hitting Control Z, Control Z. It'll keep moving back step by step by step in the order in which I took uh, action. It'll undo that action in reverse by hitting Control Z, Control Z. Most people don't know, however, that Control Y redoes. So it constantly moves forward in the action. So between the two, Control Z and Control Y, one's an undo, one's a redo button. Allows you to quickly uh, move things around. If I want to save this document, what would I hit? If you guessed Control S, you'll notice that it instantly saves this file. What's interesting is in the new um, programs and the cloud programs, they're always saving the document. So you actually don't have to do that. But for consistency with the older ones, Control S is always a great way to make sure your work is saved. If I wanted to print, it wants me to sign in. I don't want to do that. Uh, if you, let me cancel out of that. If I wanted to print this document, what would I hit? Control P. If I wanted to take some text, like an entire paragraph here, for example, 
and I'll highlight it. I want to make it bold. Of course, that little menu pops up. I could just hit bold, but I can also hit control B for bold, control I for italics, and I can turn them on or off just by rehitting the buttons. So it makes it super, super easy. Um, so control B, control I, you probably knew all these, but just a quick refresher. Let's talk about how we uh, uh, manage these files. So inside of any of the applications, just like we did before, control N is always new. So it'll create a new document for you. Now that didn't remove the old document. It's still there, basically in the back. Uh, but it creates a new document and brings it up full screen so I can start working on, on something new. Um, if I don't want that, just like we saw before, control W makes it go away. Remember, this is very similar to what we saw on the tabs in the uh, uh, other information in the file manager. Um, and then if you want to create a folder, if you're in the particular thing, control shift and uh, N allows you to create a folder. So let's say I'm saving a file. I go ahead and hit control shift end and create a new folder just again, like we had in the file explorer. Uh, super easy, super uh, awesome. Let's talk about laying this data out correctly. Um, one of the things that we often want to do is change font sizes. And this could also be very intensive with the mouse. And I scroll up here and I try to get that menu to pop up. And then I got to click down here and I'm going to say, let's make it 14. No, I want it to be 16. You're kind of jacking around with this. Well, of course, there's an easier key sequence to do this. Just like we did with the zoom in and zoom out, we're going to hold the control key and we're going to hit the plus sign and the minus sign, um, so, uh, I'm sorry, the, not the plus sign and the minus sign, we want to use the brackets. Now the brackets, I'm going to show you these on the computer, uh, but the brackets allow you to bracket in, which will allow you to zoom the font size up or zoom the font size down uh, based on whatever you're doing. So let's try this again. I'm going to highlight some text. I'm going to hit my control key and I'm going to bracket up or down. If I could bracket, uh, open bracket, you'll see it's getting smaller. If I use a closed bracket, it's getting bigger, 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 bigger. And so it's real easy to visually just kind of play back and forth till you get it exactly right. And you can see right on the screen exactly what font size that you're doing. Not many of us are good at guessing that this is a 0.31 font size. Um, but just by holding down the control key and using bracket close and bracket open, um, we can scale it up or down based on visually what we think will fit well in the, the spot. Um, we talked before about the control key and the wheel wheelie mouse to zoom in and zoom out. That works in every single Microsoft application. It also works in File Explorer. You've seen that previously. Uh, so that should be nothing new. Um, people often want to center the text or left align or right align. It's three quick keys. Control E will center the text. Control L for left. Left justifies it. Control R for right. Right justifies it. Pretty simple stuff. Easy to remember, but a great way to quickly lay out your document however you want it to be. Okay. Only two more sections to go. We're going to talk about moving through your document, through the text that you have. And uh, what I'm going to do, just to make this a whole lot easier, and it's ironic that the thing I'm about to show you would make this a whole lot easier, but I'm going to make this uh, text bigger, so you can see. And I'm going to just set my cursor at the end of this paragraph, so you can see it kind of down toward the bottom there. And what I want to show you is there's a couple of quick keys that can move me around the document. Control and home, so we go up to home, is always going to take me up to the very first part of the document, no matter where it is. If this was 100 pages, boom, it takes me right back to the beginning. Control and end, to no surprise, takes me to the very last cursor on the very last page of the document. So again, it makes it a little easier to jump forward and backward through the document uh, as you need to manipulate around it. So those are great two tools. If I click inside here, I click right on the end of this, I'm going to hit control and I'm going to use my arrow keys. And watch what happens when I hit control right. You'll notice that it's jumping in entire words, where if I don't hold the control key down, now it's moving it character by character by character. So if you want to move an entire word, use the right button and it'll skip back an entire word. What if I use control and up? 
And then when I do this, you'll notice that it is jumping entire sections here. So right now it's up where it says uh, suspense there or suspend -lease, and I click down. So up and down are jumping entire paragraphs up and down, not lines, but entire paragraphs. If I didn't hold the control key, it would be lines. But if I hold the control key, it's going to move an entire paragraph at a time. So much faster, much quicker way to get around. Now there's a combination key that you want to remember when you do this, which is the shift key. Now watch what happens when I hold the shift and use the arrow right, arrow left. I can do it by one character. And what it's allowing me to do is grab like this word or these two words. So every time I hold the shift key, it's remembering where I started and selecting everything to where I'm going. What happens if I hold control and shift? And now you'll see it's grabbing entire words and adding them into it. What if I go control shift and up? You'll see that it grabs an entire paragraph above. Control shift and down grabs the entire paragraph below. So shift basically says grab everything between where I started and where I ended and control lets you jump forward and backward, up or down uh, as we already talked about. So those combination of keys it takes a little bit of getting used to by playing with them, but it's much faster to grab entire sections of the document just using the keyboard than to again, lift my mouse, highlight, try to paint it all out uh, and make it work. I don't have to do that. I can use those control keys to do it. The other thing that's really nice, I'm going to jump back down here. Let me insert right back at that paragraph I was at. Watch what happens when I hold control and backspace. It will actually delete the entire word. So there's Porta. If I hit backspace, nunc, it's gone. So it's actually deleting entire words at a time instead of just a single character. So control and backspace gets rid of the entire word that's in there. Okay, one last feature besides movement, I want to show you how to split your screen. And again, this works great. This is really a word issue because um, often in Word we're wanting to see like maybe the, the header up in one section in the body or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm going to use the control, I'm going to use the alt, and I'm going to use the S. And wherever my cursor is, you'll see where my cursor is right now, control, alt, S, it'll split the screen. And now I've got two separate screens here, one on top and one on bottom. And this allows me to align, you know, I want to look on page four down here, and I want to look on page two up top so I can figure out exactly legalese or how it all works or whatever. And then again, to reverse this, all I would have to do is Control, Alt, and S, and it removes that split, puts me right back where it was. So turn it on, turn it off, super easy, super quick and I can split my window and make it work. Quite a lot that we had in that one. It's time for a real quick review, and uh, let's see how well you can remember a lot of these uh, key sequences. <laughs>